Okay, in this video, we're going to um, review lower extremity stomach dysfunction. And we're going to start with the hip or the femoral acetabular joint. So, of course, at this point, we've done gross range of motion, and now we're, uh, we're deciding that we're going to segmentally evaluate the joint. And um, in this supine position, to really get a nice symmetric appreciation of the motion, we would like our, we're gonna have our patient reset their hips, so lift, their, lift your hips up and down, and then we're gonna passively bring them back uh, to midline. Now from here, we can um, slide our hands behind their ankles and then introduce internal rotation and external rotation. So we can do it on both sides and compare one to the other. Okay. So what I find is there's mostly symmetric motion on this right side, but on this left side, in external rotation, I feel a great deal of restriction, and in internal rotation, I feel like I have a better, um, better range of motion. So I can start um, with my hands on both sides to compare and then evaluate in more detail one side versus the other using a variety of different hand positions. So on this uh, um, left side so far, we have a restriction in external rotation, a preference in internal rotation. So at least we have an internal rotation dysfunction on this left side. Now, uh, the next range of motion we can evaluate for is uh, adduction and abduction. So we can take each leg and move it into adduction and then into abduction. So again, on this right side, we have mostly symmetric motion. And on this left side, in abduction, I have a little bit of an accentu accentuated motion. And then in adduction, uh, I hit a bit of a restricted barrier. So I have here an abduction dysfunction. Now to evaluate for flexion and extension, I'm gonna have my patient lie on their right side. Good. And then with one hand, I'm gonna stabilize the pelvis, the innominate, and then I have the uh, femoral, uh, femoral bone here, or the greater trochanter here, um, and this is where I'm gonna be kind of focusing where my uh, attention is gonna be as I'm moving uh, the joint distally. So now I can grab the knee. I can do this a number of ways to support the knee uh, effectively, and I'm trying to really isolate my motion to the uh, femoral acetabular joint. So now here in Extension, I feel like I, ha I hit a bit of a restricted barrier, as in when I get to this point of extension, I feel like the innominate starts to move. That signifies the end of the range of motion. And then in flexion, I have pretty good range of motion throughout. And this is about the end where the innominate starts to move again. So I would uh, identify this as uh, having a restriction in extension, and I would name for my freedom, which would be a flexion dysfunction of the femoral acetabular joint. And I could combine each of those somatic dysfunctions to um, document my final determination of somatic dysfunction for that left uh, hip.